Welcome back to another Python tutorial series. We're continuing the next section in our series on Python data structures. Uh, so in our last series, we talked about the doubly linked list. And then in our first one, we talked about the single linked list. So we're going to kind of revisit the single linked list, but we're going to see a variation of that particular uh, type of data structure. We're now going to talk about a circular linked list. Now, if you watched my series on the single linked list, basically a circular linked list is almost identical to a single linked list, except now if we actually go to our last node inside of our linked list, instead of it having point to nothing, so an empty, basically, you know, a none object, uh, now what we're gonna have it do is we're gonna have that final node, we're gonna have its pointer point back to the head. So now in a sense, we are creating this circle where now that last node will point back to our head. And so what this will allow us to do is now we can basically traverse the entire list. And then once we reach the end, we'll come right back to the front of our list. So what are some of the advantages and disadvantages of this protect, uh, particular type of data structure? Well, one of the advantages is that the entire list can be traversed from any node. And so that means um, we can basically start at the second node and we can traverse the entire list because even if we hit the final node, it will still take us back to the first node at which point the uh, basically the traversal will continue. Um, uh, circular lists are required data structures when we want to a list to be accessed in a circle or a loop. That's obviously kind of uh, you know, obvious in that regard. And so if we want to use these particular data structures in a loop, that's one that we're going to be having to go to. Um, despite being a, cir uh, a single circular linked list, uh, we can still easily traverse it in the previous node, which is not possible in a single linked list. And basically what they're saying there is that, hey, even if we want to go to the previous node, we can easily access that node because again, we now have this mechanism that will take us back to the front. And then at which point we can continue, continue traversing. Uh, so that way we can reach the end point that we want to. So uh, that is an advantage because naturally with a single link list, we can't do that. We would actually have to restart our program and uh, have it start from the beginning. All right, what are some disadvantages though? Well, as you can imagine, they're a little bit more complex than a single linked list. We now have to maintain this final pointer, but you know, for the most part, it's not too bad. Reversing of a circular list is a, is as is more complex compared to a single or a, a doubly linked list, and we'll see that in a few videos. Don't you worry. Um, if not traversed carefully, uh, we can end up in an infinite loop, and we will see this very often. And so you'll see my code change a little bit compared to a single linked list because now we've got this problem where we can no longer just have this condition that says, you know, while current node keep doing something because technically the current node will always exist because uh, previously once it, it reached that last node and it pointed to nothing, our while loop would terminate. But with the circular linked list, it's just going to go right back to the head. So that condition would actually never terminate. And then like a singly and a doubly list, a circular link list also don't support direct accessing of elements. So again, we would have to, in some cases, traverse if we don't know the position of our particular um, element. And so why would we use circular link list? Well, uh, they're basically used in applications where the entire, process, entire list is accessed one by one in a loop. So operating systems may use it to switch between various running applications in a circular loop. So that's kind of an example of where we would use it. Um, it's also used by operating systems to share time for different user, users, generally user uses round robin time sharing mechanism. And then also multiplayer games use circular list to swap between players in a loop. And so, you know, these are just some use cases of particular why you might want to um, use a circular link list. I will also put a nice little performance table there for you as well, as long as in the notes. So each one will have uh, kind of what each method is doing and then also the time complexity of that particular operation. So that being said, let us get started. Alrighty, so the first thing that we are gonna do is we're gonna define our node object. 
And this is just basically going to be like pretty much all the other videos. We're going to initialize it and we're going to say that it's going to have a piece of data that will equal none by default. And then it's going to have a next node. So this will be something that again, this will basically be that pointer. It's going to be pointing to the next node. And so we're going to say the data is going to equal the data itself. And then the next node is going to equal the next node, just like that. Okay, and I'll move my little space. And then finally, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our linked list, our circular linked list. So we'll give it a name, circular linked list. And then from here, we will also define an initialization component of it. And so we'll say define init underscore, and then we will do self. Uh, in this one, we're going to define both a head and a tail, the tail being called end. We will see that by defining this end component or this tail component, we will be able to make deletion and insertion operations O of constants, so basically O of one. Um, so it does add a little bit extra complexity to our circular linked list, but it will come to benefit us when we perform certain operations. And so what we'll do is we'll say self.head equals head, and then self.end equals end as well. All right, so let's define a couple of methods. We'll do uh, traversal, we will do insert end, and then insert beginning. We'll insert a couple nodes, and then we'll call it quits for this video. So the first one will be traversing our, no our list. I was about to say node, definitely not a node. So we're gonna traverse our list. And so really what we need to do is we need to define the, the first node. Well, that's just gonna be uh, the head itself. So we'll say current node equals self dot head. And here we go. So as long as there is a next node, keep going. Say next node, keep going. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say while current node dot next node, keep doing something. The first thing is print the data. So we'll say print current node dot data. Alrighty. And then we'll say we need to reassign the current node and we'll say current node dot next node. So this will reassign it. But here's the problem. Again, remember up here, remember if I have if that final node is going to be pointing back to the first node. Ask yourself, is this ever going to actually be false? No, because every node is going to have a next node, even if it's the final node, because the final node just points back to the first node. So <clears throat> this will actually cause an infinite loop if we were to run it as is. We need to add one final condition. We're going to say if the current node, so if the node that we're on equals the head node, it means we've traversed the entire list. So we need to break our while loop and we need to exit it. That's all this is doing. This is probably the most important condition out of this entire little method is if you don't have this little section, you will be sitting and you will never have that loop end. So once we get back to the head, end the loop. That's really what that little section is doing. We break out of our loop once our current node is equal to the head again. Now, you wanna make sure that you put it after this, after this part because technically on the first loop, that condition would be met. So you wanna put it after you do your reassignment so that way it doesn't print everything or it doesn't, ex or it doesn't terminate early. Okay, so now that we've defined our traversal method, let's define our insert end method. So this will insert a node at the end of our list. And so this will take a piece of data and we're gonna write it in such a way that we're gonna have um, performance of O of constant. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a new node. And so that will be just our node object after we pass our little data through. We've seen this before, okay? And so in this situation, we can have a couple different scenarios. We can have an empty list or a non-empty list. If it's an empty list, we're just gonna insert it in the head, and then we're also gonna define the tail component as well. So really the first one is, if the list is empty, blah, blah, blah. So we're gonna say if self.head equals none, 
what are we going to do? Well, first, make sure the self.head now equals that new node. And then we're going to say self.head.next node is going to equal the new node. Because remember, even though it's the only node in our list at this point, it's still going to have a next pointer that's going to basically just point back to itself. So that's what this part is doing. It's taking that last node and making sure it's pointing back to the head. And more importantly, what I want you to do is I want you to have this little end component that says, hey, now the final node, because our list was empty, it's both the head and the tail. And so here, we're just going to say return. So if you have an empty list, assign the head to be the new node, make sure that you set the next pointer back to the head, and then also make sure that you define the tail as that new no node as well. So this is kind of like a very special case. We're handling an empty list. And so now that we've done that, we're gonna handle the non-empty case. If the list is not empty, what we're gonna say is if self.end, or you could even do self.end, does not equal none, either one of those would be fine, then what are you gonna do there? Well, you're gonna say self.end.next node is going to equal the new node. So basically you're saying, hey, have the old end node now point to the new node. Have the new nodes dot next node pointer equal self dot head. So now you're saying because it's last node, we want to make sure that pointer is pointing back to the head. And then make sure we update our tail property of our new list. And really that's the same self dot end equals our new node. And then from here, you can exit. So really you've handled the both, uh, both condition. One is you have an empty list and one you do not have an empty list. And really they almost behave the same. It's just one you're really inserting at the head and then this one you're inserting it at the tail. Okay, so now that we've done an insert at the end, let's do an insert at the beginning. We'll add a couple nodes to our list and then we'll call it quits for this video. So we'll do insert beginning Again, it will take a piece of data, and we're gonna handle, again, two different situations. We're gonna have an empty case and a non-empty case. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get our node. Well, that's just gonna be a node after we pass our data through. We're gonna make sure that that new node dot next node points to the old head. That looks good so far. And then that the current node is uh, the self dot head. So that is currently, if there, basically it is the self.head. Um, and then from here, handle the empty uh, list case. And so we'll say if current node equals none, then we're going to say self.head equals the new node, self.end equals the new node. So really, this is just a situation where hey, again, we have an empty list, so the tail and the, and the head equal the new node. And then make sure the self.head.next node equals the new node. So this is just making sure that you're having the head pointer uh, point to the, uh, the new node. So this is really just creating that, that circle that we were talking about. Okay, so now that we've done that, so that's the empty case scenario. Handle the non empty list case we're going to say if current node well really we'll just say if self dot n does not equal none again you can technically do the the current node as well they're, they're both the same we're going to say self dot end dot next node is going to equal the new node. So we wanna make sure our last node is pointing to our new node that we're inserting in the beginning. We're gonna say that new node, we're gonna make sure that next, that next pointer is pointing to the old head. And we're gonna say self.head now equals the new node because we're inserting it in the beginning. That's what the whole method is supposed to be doing. And then we're just gonna return just like that. Okay, so now that we've defined a couple of methods Let's test it out before we close out the video, and then we can go on from there. So what we'll do is we'll insert a cell below. Sorry, I'm moving around my notes a little bit, so apologies if you're hearing some bustling. Okay, so we'll define a new list. 
and we'll say circular underscore list equals a circular linked list. And what we'll do from here is we'll insert a few nodes and we'll say circular list insert underscore n. We'll do 50 and I'm just going to copy this a couple times. We'll do 60, we'll do 70. And then really what I'm just going to do here is I'm going to make sure we test out our beginning one and we will set that to was at 90 and 100. I'm going to make sure to run this again. Perfect. Great. No errors so far. And then we'll say print after insertion. And what we'll do here is we will make sure to put our little line break so it's a little bit easier to read. And then we'll say circular list traverse. Bam, after insertion. So that makes sense. This should be in the beginning like we were seeing. So that's fine. Uh, we got our little 90, which is fine. 50, 60, 70. So it looks like everything is working beautifully. So with that being said, I'm going to finish up the video here. If you have any questions, please make sure to put them down in the comments below. Um, I guess just really the final thing before I say is that's really why I was, I was defining this one. So now here, because we now know the beginning of our node and the end of our list, um, it's a lot easier to make those insertion operations. We can now do that in O of constant time, which obviously is a performance benefit. In the previous ones, if I wanted to insert at the end, usually I would have to wait until I got the end. But because we now have that situation um, where we've identified the end node beforehand, we can make that insertion a lot, lot quicker. So again, if you have any questions, please put them down in the comments below. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video.